You know how we readers do. We just want to shove these books down people's throats. Hi, so it's me, Joella of Joella Reads. So I've noticed on BookTube, is this even recording? So I've noticed on BookTube that a lot of people, when they talk about their books, you know what I mean? Like they would talk about it in a very logical sense. Like this book was this because this, this plot was this because this, these characters are complicated. You know what I mean? So I've decided I want to talk about my books with more emotion involved. Things really stick to me, like books, uh, because of the emotions that I, you know, attach them to, or when the book was read, like what era of my life. So I want to talk about some books that came to me at the right time and are my favorites because of the emotional pull that comes from them. So that's what this video is about. I hope you enjoy. Ah, uh, yeah. Another thing I wanted to say before the video starts is that I am not going to give you a synopsis of the story in this video. There's so many review videos for these for each of these books that I think, um, you know, I don't want to give a synopsis in this. I really don't have the time. I just want to get into it and why, what, emotions, all that. Okay. Mwah. Okay, enjoy the video. Now, now, now. The first book I want to talk about is Ferris of All. So I read Ferris of All uh, in the middle of my AS year. Uh, if anyone knows the Cambridge system is really freaking hard. And I was taking physics and chemistry, English and math at the time. At the time I was studying, I was having a really hard time with school. It was just too much. It was at a point where I was starting to lose myself a bit. School was really challenging for me at the time and I was really struggling. And I started, I kind of stopped reading for a second. Like for a good two weeks, I just like stopped reading because I was just trying to get back into school and nothing was working. And I just really felt like the villain in my own story. You know, like I was just like my own enemy of progress while trying to be the main protagonist, the hero person. This book came into my life and I loved it so much because I was getting the perspective of the queen, the evil queen and how she became evil. And that her becoming a villain was not even like, Oh, it was just, just a beautiful story. I cried at the end of it. I was just reading it and I read it in one night, I think uh, 3 a.m. vibes is when I finished it. No, not even 3 a.m. I finished it at 5 a.m. when I had to wake up for school. So I didn't even sleep because I was just enjoying this so much and everything about it was just so beautiful. The writing, the feelings of the character really, that kind of like should I, shouldn't I, kind of battling yourself, kind of, because I felt like I was battling myself in school. So the fact that this character was battling herself, you know, the good in her and the bad in her, I just related to so much in a way. I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. But this book came when I needed it, and I needed something to remind me that I have a choice in this, that I'm going to be okay, that there's something that I can do. Things are in control to some degree. So that's this book. I really, I really enjoyed this book, and I, um, it definitely is one of my favorites. The next book I want to talk about is one that, you know, this character and I were really just one. So this book came into my life during um, AS, right? Closer to exam time. So I was feeling very discouraged. You know, school wasn't really doing it for me at the time. I felt really lost and I felt like my purpose was kind of wandering. I didn't even know what my purpose was anymore. Then came Spellslinger. This book really... Oh man, I can't even explain. Uh, I have two copies of it even. The first copy I had, I tabbed it so much. So this boy called Keelan, he's also struggling with this particular rite of passage of magic. And he's using trickery. He's finding different ways to kind of swindle his way into, you know, passing. And I feel like I was doing the same. I feel like I was just faking it till I make it, but it wasn't working. So I really felt connected to the character. And I felt emotionally, I felt really understood because he feels lost and I feel lost. When Farius Parfax comes into his life, she like flips the switch on his whole life and everything changes for him and for some reason, now he's starting to find himself and his purpose. So when this book came and I finished it, I felt like, you know, I felt understood and I felt like, you know, there is going to be an after. That's when I started using this phrase for myself, which is, there's an after. There's still something I can do later or even now in the next 10 minutes, in the next second that could change my life. So that's what this book really did for me. I, uh, I loved it a lot. Yeah. The next book I want to talk about is a Brandon Sanderson book. This book came into my life on the day I had surgery. So I bought the book uh, the day I had surgery. Just picked it out randomly. I knew I heard the name of this author before, but I just, I wanted something sci-fi. Then I saw this and I was like, hmm, this cover looks interesting. And then um, I took it, I had my surgery. And after surgery, um, I was just uh, kind of dead inside. <laughs> Uh, I wasn't feeling that great after surgery because, you know, um, after I got my results for school, 
I wasn't feeling very confident. Yeah, and then this book came along and I was reading it, right? Then in the middle of the book, what right when this particular wonderful scene in the book happens, my mom told me that I got accepted to the university I go to right now. And I I was starstruck. I was the fact that when the characters were having a good moment, I was having a good moment and this character was going through such struggle and adjustment in the story and i felt like i had to adjust to so much i mean adjusted to the fact that i couldn't walk for six weeks i mean this book and i were really connecting the sisters in the story one of them goes through this change and it just changes everything about her life plan and that's how i felt when my results came out i felt like you know, i felt like what am i gonna do what's next and i felt like that's the same that this character one of the characters in here was feeling and i just felt really lost even a second character, his name is Light Song in the book, I felt a similar emotions to him. And I think that's what made this book so special for me and why I tabbed it so much. Uh, really, it's one of those books that really sits with me because it also linked into what was happening in my life. And uh, yeah, I really, really love this book. I really love it. The next book I'm going to talk about is <laughs> The Forbidden Wish. So this book came into my life. Uh, in the middle of AS, now things were getting really rough for me in school. It got to a point where I just stopped caring about school completely. I was really demotivated and I needed to escape into a fantasy world that would just get me out of my reality because at that point I wasn't feeling up to life. I wasn't feeling up to waking up at school and the monotony of it and you know I just wasn't feeling like I was here anymore so I needed somewhere to go. So somewhere to go and somewhere to feel like you know things are tangible again. I needed an escape from reality. I needed something that would make me feel at home. You know what I mean? Like that's the type of book I needed and then this came along and it was perfect. Unfortunately, I devoured it in literally one night. I started reading the book, I think around like 10 p.m. Then I read all the way until 5.30 a.m. when I need to go to school. And I only finished the book at school at uh, 7.20, uh, just before registration. And I finished it and I was just like, oh my gosh, I loved it so much. And I felt like I felt that zeal for life again. You know, I just... Thinking about this book really just just really touches my heart. I raved about it for months to my sister. She got sick of it. Just you have to read this book. You have to. Oh my gosh. You know how we readers do. We just want to shove these books down people's throats. So that was this book for me. And it's also one of my favorite type of storylines. It's the Aladdin story where the genie's a chick. The genie in this story, she was feeling, I think, in a similar way that I was feeling at the time. So I once again felt understood. And I felt like it just brought me back. I felt rejuvenated after I read this book. It was lovely and I stand alone, by the way, and I freaking loved it. Mm. Okay, the sun is setting, so I think I'll do a part two to this. The next book I'm going to talk about is Tiger Lily. So at the time that I read Tiger Lily, I was um, having hiccups in my romantic life. So when I saw this story come up and I was like, I have to read that. So what's happening is that Tiger Lily is out here in these streets. Tiger Lily is one of those characters that you don't really think about when you say Peter Pan. You know, you think of Peter Pan and you think of Wendy Darling. But the story talks about before Wendy Darling came along and ruined things. <laughs> it's about Tiger Lily from the perspective of Tinkerbell. So we're in Tinkerbell's head and we are watching what's happening with Tiger Lily. So Tiger Lily and Peter's relationship here. <sighs> I felt like I was watching myself in my situationships. <laughs> I just, uh, uh, I lost a nail, by the way. <laughs> I was really frustrated. I was feeling so much, but to the point where at the end of the book, I was just crying. In the middle of the book, I was crying. And like the beginning of the book, I was like, damn. I felt like I was watching myself like self-sabotage in my own love life. And you know what? That's how I felt while reading this. Tiger Lily goes through things that are similar to what I've gone through in my romantic lifestyle. So this was, um, yeah, I, it was really emotional for me. And after reading it, I felt like, firstly, I felt understood. Two, <laughs> I've been saying that a lot, but you get what I'm trying to say. The second thing, after reading this, I really felt like 
you know what, it's gonna be okay, girl. It's gonna be all right. With Instagram and so many forms of social media telling us to be in relationships, it was so good to see something that makes me feel less bad about my relationship-related conundrums. You know, like, what happens in here? I'm looking at myself and I'm like, you know what, I'm doing pretty fine. It really is an emotional read and I think, um, someone anyone should read this if you're really interested in it go for it i'm not saying that it's the best book in the whole world but it suited my emotions at the time mm. the book i want to talk about now is red queen so i think many of you know this is the first book i ever read ever 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 before i picked up this book with my mom because she was like you have to start reading then we went to the bookstore and we picked up this book i just saw it and i thought oh this is a pretty ass cover you know and I was, i'm gonna take it so i took it and i got home and I read it in literally six hours and then I reread it. I reread it. I reread it. I reread it uh, again. I, I read it again because, dang, I had never seen something so beautiful in my whole life. I was just so. I was so invested in the characters. I didn't believe it. I thought that the first book I'd ever read, I would just kind of like take a week to read it because I wasn't a reader. Then I found this gem and I read it and I loved it. This was absolutely amazing for me. Reading gave me purpose again in life. At the time I read this, it was the first book I ever read, by the way, I had, I felt like I had no purpose. I didn't know if I was like really contributing to my family. I didn't know whether I was really doing okay in school. I felt, honestly, I felt like I was, I just wasn't feeling like I had my thing. I didn't have a thing. Like fashion, not really. Um, public speaking, not really. Gossiping, not something I want to get into at all. Then I got this. This was a gift to my life. And reading became my thing. Now I was seeing emotions through somebody else. These authors are really putting themselves into their books. You know what I mean? To some degree. And I felt so connected. And that, I think that's what makes reading so beautiful for me as well. Just that sense of connection to something or someone. And the fact that through this one book, a lot of people are connected. I just, uh, yeah, this is that book for me. Okay, the sun is down. I really hope the lighting is okay. If it's not, I'm so sorry. In the comments down below, let's talk. Let's communicate. Uh, just tell me, you know, like, you know, a book that was there for a particular season in your life. You know, let's interact with each other down there. Let's talk to other commenters. Let's chat. Let's mingle. Maybe you might even find that you have the same book that changed your life with another person. So really just, um, yeah. That's all I have to say. Thank you for being here and um, have a wonderful day. We'll talk soon. See you on my next one. Bye.